President Trump will meet today with Japanese Prime Minister Shinzo Abe at the White House. The pair will then head to the president's Mar-a-Lago Club in Florida. They are expected to discuss economic and security priorities, including trade after the collapse of the Trans-Pacific Partnership. Caroline Kennedy became the first woman to serve as U.S. Ambassador to J Japan in 2013. Her achievements include facilitating President Obama's historic visit to Hiroshima and Prime Minister Abe's visit to Pearl Harbor. Kennedy stepped down from the role last month. She joins us at the table. Welcome back home. Thank you. It's yes. great to be home. Yeah. yeah. And great to have you on a day like this. Well, this is a big meeting, clearly, as Japan is seen as America's closest ally in Asia. We know that the prime minister has said he thinks trust, uh, Trump is someone he can trust. What's at stake in this meeting? Uh, well, I think it's hugely important for both leaders. Uh, for Japan, obviously, that depends on the U.S., uh, both for its security uh, as well as uh, a number one, you know, economic partner. Uh, and I think our country, something that gets lost, are really partners around the world in uh, all the global issues that we face. And so I think for President Trump, it's important to reaffirm in, uh, that relationship, uh, as well as to send a signal that the U.S. is going to remain engaged in Asia. Yeah, and President just Trump, before, ahead, I just want to say, just before this meeting at the White House and them going to play golf, then President Trump has a late night call last night with President Xi yeah. of China. Yeah. What message does that send? Uh, well, I think it shows that the Chinese are watching yeah. uh, yes. <laughs> and listening. And I think it shows the importance of the U.S.-Japan alliance um, because obviously the Chinese uh, have a big uh, stake in all of this. And certainly Japan is uh, increasingly concerned about Chinese behavior in the region. Uh, they are uh, encroaching provocative behavior, uh, taking over islands, um, interfering with Japanese uh, ships and planes. And so uh, I think this whole thing, it's a dangerous area. And, um, and I think it's with North Korea shooting off nuclear, uh, testing nuclear bombs and shooting off and missiles. Um, it's you know, there is a lot going on there that, uh, that the U.S. needs to focus on that could really affect our own security. The Japanese prime minister seems determined to have a, a strong relationship with President Trump. But at the same time, he's also staked a lot of political capital on the TPP, which Trump, of course, has knocked down, you know, almost immediately. He, the Japanese prime minister seems to think there's still a chance he can rescue something here. Do you think that's true? Uh, well, I don't know, but I'd certainly in the U.S. interest. Um, certainly, it's in the Japanese interest. Uh, it will help um, stimulate the Japanese economy. Um, but I think it's in the U.S. interest because it really creates a network where the U.S. is a leader in Asia, where um, all the growth in the 21st century is going to happen. And it uh, cements our relationships with 12 countries, uh, 10, 11 other countries in the region plus us. Mm -hmm. uh, and if we're not um, leading um, and setting the rules and uh, practices, China will easily move in on that. And all the countries are watching to see what the United States is going to do in Asia. Uh, President Trump always says America first. And while it's always very pleasing to hear in this country, do you ever worry that that's, there, there's a downside to that message for our allies to hear? Uh, well, I think the U.S. has um, achieved a, a leadership position in the world because we have worked with others. We've set up this international order uh, that has benefited the entire world. Certainly in Asia, it's allowed for tremendous economic growth, and it's benefited us as well. Mm -hmm. So I think that when America first means... Um, you know, putting our own national interests first, that's all great. Every country does that. Um, but when it means um, excluding others or uh, insulting our allies uh, and not appreciating or working with them as partners to advance our common goals, I think that's, that's not in our interest. But, but you've called that, uh, that America first message alarming. Do you think that that's how our allies are seeing it as not working with them? Well, I think they have, yeah, I think they have serious questions. I think that um, the phone call with, uh, with um, Australia uh, and uh, is alarming to countries in the region who have uh, been by our side all the way along. Same with Japan. I think they're just all trying to figure out what, uh, what this means going forward. Let's talk about you, Caroline Kennedy, for a second. Back to Nora's question. <laughs> Welcome back home. We all remember, I remember, Nora, when you did the 60 Minutes piece and we saw you in Japan with very little diplomatic experience, but you're getting two thumbs up as you're leaving, as you have left. What did you get out of that experience? What have you learned? Your favorite son is here. He spent a year with you in Japan. Uh, what are you most proud of when you look back at that? Well, I think... Um this may sound like a cliche, but I really learned the most about America. Um, I mean, I learned a tremendous amount about Japan, and it's endlessly fascinating. Um, but really how people in Asia and Japan see our country 
And I think that that made me so proud of the United States, of our leadership, our values, our commitment to the rule of law, our commitment to democracy. And, um, and I think uh, that's what the whole world sees in us. Um, I think our economy um, is uh, the leader. And I think that, that you just can't um, you know, overstate how, um, how much people in Asia want our, us to be there and want our leadership. How big a threat is China? Militarily, yeah. Let's talk um, well, about they are just uh, having double-digit increases in their military spending, which is already uh, huge. Uh, so I think that um, uh, Japan has a capable but small defensive um, self-defense force, and um, and so I think Korea. This is a very militarized region, and um, and. It's very important for the U.S. to um, stay engaged there because that actually, everyone looks to us to keep um, security. And that's another reason why um, steady leadership is so important. There's been a lot of speculation about what you will do next. Yes. And you said, I just got back, I got to think about it. But I'm wondering, do you, have you ever had any second thoughts about not taking the New York Senate seat in 2008 when Hillary Clinton left? Uh, this, the experience of being in Japan was really something that I obviously couldn't have predicted and it turned out uh, really to be really a great privilege. So I'm so glad that everything worked out the way it did. So okay, but that's not, that's not that's answer that question. Oh, no. But, the answer would be no. No, none. <laughs> no. no. Last time you were here, you wrote, see you in Tokyo, which was a little bit of a hint. So I'm thinking, when you're going to announce you're running for mayor, president, governor, or senator? Nothing? I don't know. We'll have to see what I write on the yes. board. Oh, right. yeah! <laughs> <laughs> Maybe well, I'll see you in Tokyo yeah, again. Yeah. I don't know. Yeah. Well, Jack's on deck. We'll see. Yeah. Caroline Kennedy, we thank you.